from the stillness of Japanese shakuhachi to the absolutely ecstatic drum beats from the wisdom of Zen Buddhism to the sensuality of sound experiences. My guest today embodies a unique spectrum of celebrating life. His message comes from the heart and his skills provide deep healing. Meet a remarkable man, meet Pepe Danza. Welcome to The Power of Rhythm, a podcast with your host, Reinhard Flatischler, around the one thing that connects us all. Rhythm. So welcome to my podcast, Pepe. Thank you, my friend. Great what an honor and a joy to talk to you, my friend. When I saw uh, you playing with uh, actually Esther Stone, I knew I have to talk to you. It was it's a very special way you play the drum, a very special way you are playing the flute, you know, so that attracted me. And then I found out all about your other background. <laughs> that is so amazing that we're trying to cover. But let me actually go um, to my first question. We are coming out of a really a series of a year's lockdown. And a lot of people around here, I would say, are fearful, angry, um, depressed. Other people are like embarking, are kind of, you know, going really to a new way of living. Where do you see where the potential of the current times we are living in? lies and are we ready to shift to a higher frequency <laughs> you know my background more is kind of rooted in zen and in taoism and uh, we do not project into the future at all we just live in this moment and trust life to move towards where it has to go we we try to avoid any adjectives of any mm -hmm. kind, you know, um, good weather, bad weather, uh, good uh, life, bad life. It, it is what it is. Right. I do feel very much in my heart that it's this is a golden opportunity. Um, but you know, there's so much talk about this is a special time for us and uh, transformation. And if we look at history, humanity has gone through this hundreds of times. And unfortunately, we're so stupid. <laughs> we don't seem to learn from, from experience. And the solutions are so simple, right? Just open our hearts to each other and seek the experience of oneness, which mm. is the underlying reality of, of everything. And so, yes, this is a golden opportunity. No, I don't know if humanity is going to take advantage of it and really transform itself. I pray for that. And I think music is a really fundamental element in that uh, transformation. And so I'm putting my drops in the bucket and hoping that it does spread. But there's no expectation, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, what's so interesting is that right now it's the first time that more than 8 billion people on the planet are sharing that kind of experience, you know, where uh, it's really getting in two directions. One are getting really fearful and one are really getting up. It's, it's so many people at the same time uh, on this planet doing this process. That's very, very interesting, I would say. And it, it is a golden opportunity for experience yeah. our oneness and our connectivity and our interconnectedness uh, mm -hmm. golden opportunity but like i say i i love humanity but i don't have a great uh, deep uh, trust in uh, in uh, the collective to really see into this uh, amazing opportunity and not follow the the fear energy that's being constantly fed and the separation energy constantly now is the vaccinated against the unvaccinated you hate the chinese you, Oh my God, you know, it's such a, it's painful, it's painful. Yeah. And also the use of substances to, to deaden the pain. Yeah. So you see, you go to Netflix, any Hollywood movie, as soon as something goes wrong, 
the whiskey goes in, the drugs go in. It's like, gee, guys, just breathe uh, and feel, you know. Isn't that the moment for people like you and me to help people? I mean, to be there for people when they're desperate instead of, you know, taking a substance, maybe have a sound journey or having a rhythm journey, you know? Yeah, well, I, I come from teaching a meditation workshop and nobody really knows me around here, but, you know, I had 12 people out there very focused and very grateful. And it's like, ah, so nice to be able to share that, you know, drop by drop. Yeah. Where are you right now, Pepe? I'm in Prague. In Prague? Oh, wow. My know. favorite city in the world. I love Prague. Fantastic. Now, you are born in Uruguay, correct? Correct. And you live in Israel? I don't know where I live. But <laughs> right now, I am. I just came out of six years in Israel, and now I am in Slovakia. You live there now? I am in Slovakia right now, yes. Okay. So what was the place on the planet that kind of gave you the most uh, yes uh, feeling? Brazil, India, and Japan. <laughs> Yeah, for very different reasons. <laughs> wow, wow. Brazil is uh, very much true for me, too. And Brazil they... is, is the body and the groove and the mm -hmm. celebration and the abundance. You know, India is like deep, mm -hmm. deep spirit. And Japan is the samurai. <laughs> Do it now or never. <laughs> yeah. So you are not only a drummer, you are a multi-instrumentalist, um, which, you know, a really deep connection to uh, shakuhachi, to a flute, I could not even uh, get a sound out of. <laughs> I know. Um, and you are, um, you know, you state that music is a powerful transformative force. So now, if someone says, um, how can I get there? What is, I, I'm nowhere. I'm just, you know, uh, I haven't uh, had musical training, uh, but I, I'm graving for you know me having music in my life for gross what would you tell this human being what suggestions do you come some of your wisdom <laughs> breathe and listen breathe and listen mm -hmm. there is no uh, i think there is no mastery possible without a proper uh, ability to take a full breath because it's really the breath that transforms into, into sound, whatever you're playing. You cannot play any instrument if you don't know how to breathe. Listen. Uh, so many, I played with so many like professional musicians that I go like, this person is not listening. <laughs> it's like an amazing thing. So once you have your breath and you have your ability to listen, the ability to play an instrument will come so much more naturally and, and easily, yes? But then again, the other element is tremendous discipline. My, my philosophy has always been that I need to serve spirits through sound and that my only, my only real duty is to perfect my technique so that spirit can speak without technical limitations through me. So technique on the one side, and on the other side, like really learn how to get out of the way. So spirit can speak through me. So here you have technique and, and really discipline and meditation. So we can really quiet ourselves and receive, yeah, I don't know what you would call it, higher, higher vibration that goes through you rather than what scale do I play for this chord, you know? <laughs> That's a very practical um, approach you can uh, out to our listeners here. It's great. Now, uh, one thing that people are not so much used to it is discipline has kind of a negative connotation. Not at all for me, of course, <laughs> but uh, it, maybe through the school it has gone into this um, place where people think, oh, this is just, I have to do it again. How would you, with your wisdom again, um, advise someone to override this old conditioning and get the groovy thing out of discipline. Yeah. Well, I tell my students, don't ever play exercises. Just play music and mm. listen to what you're playing. So if you're a guitar player and you're playing your C major scale, 
play that C major scale. It's intervals are magical, and you haven't. I mean, really think what it takes in the history of humanity to really have the mastery of sound and invent this instrument, and you were able to figure out how to enjoy and, and, and buy this instrument. Now you're sitting down with this instrument and it's your expression through sound. Don't take it as a duty. Don't take it as an exercise, a boring thing. Just savor every note, right? Savor every note and really feel the relationship of notes. So the bottom line, don't play exercises. Play music and be listening to what you do at all times. For me personally, it's like a religion, right? The, the sound is creation. Creation is God or whatever it is you want to call it. So there's a devotional sense that if you bring into, into your practice that devotional sense and that mm. open-heartedness and open-earness, yeah. uh, it's effortless. And the more you do it, the more you go into it. Once I started playing shakuhachi and I thought, okay, it was in the forest. I'll do half hour, one hour of practice. I finish and I look, it's like I have been playing for four hours. Forget about the club. Oh, yeah, from nine to one, I have to practice. <laughs> no, you don't have to do anything. Follow, follow your heart. Ten minutes a day is much better than five hours on Sunday. You know, just put the drop there. And the energy of love and devotion has to be there all the time. Yeah. And the spirit of service, you know, the spirit of service. I mean, we all started music to, to get the girls and get the attention of the love. But slowly we realized, hey, you know, I can really affect an atmosphere that can actually transform people. And that is so much, so much more. Yes. So, in other words, back to the groove as one of the titles of your CDs. I, I want to actually play it for our listeners. So we'll okay. hear a little bit of your... Thanks, Ryan.
Danza, back to groove. Is this all you? This is all me in my living room, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of kalimbas are here, right? And a, a lot of kalimbas played with the, with the mallets and ah, Spanish okay. guitar and electric guitar, a bit of bass. And the flute is an Indian flute, Bansuri, but I'm playing it in the Fula, Fula in African style. So it's, it's a different uh, technique. Incredible. You know, um, the question that comes to my mind by having um, so many tools as you have, um, when you are teaching a class, when there's a workshop, how do you start? Do you start with meditation? Do you leave it up to what comes? Do you start with drums? Usually when I teach, a, is I teach a specific thing. They ask me to oh, okay. teach djembe, to teach guitar. But yeah, usually some African drummers used to laugh at, at me and when we had big festivals because they go to my class and I always start yeah. with meditation. It's like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just like for me, uh, I always tell my students as a percussionist, the most important thing you do is what you don't do. <laughs> you know? It's the space between the notes, the spaciousness, wow. yeah. So I, I call it the architecture of silence. Basically, we're architects of silence. And the important thing is that that silence permeates what we do, right? It's amazing for me. It's like a family of space lovers. Uh, <laughs> you, yes. know, you, then uh, also the same thing when I was talking with Estas, the same mm -hmm. when I was talking with Cabezan. We are also found of space, you know. I composed even um, an orchestra piece called Space Beyond uh -huh. Space. <laughs> you know, so I'd I love really, to hear that. I really have to hear, you hear a little bit of the, in the end, but you know, space. Right. Be, so I was space. What is really space? Well, you know, in in Shekuhachi training, uh, the the space between the notes actually has a name, mm -hmm. and the ma is the quality of silence after a note just kind of dies very gently and disappears into silence. The quality of that silence in Japan is called ma. And when you train with your teacher, your teacher is listening more to your silence than your actual playing. Wow. You know? it's, it's an amazing yeah. thing. So it's well, a fundamental concept. We should bring this to your Western uh, yeah. academies and conservatoires. Completely. <laughs> it's like, yeah, your playing is okay, but your silence, ah, not so good. <laughs> now, yeah. You've been like three years in Japan, right? Uh, yeah. Studying shakuhachi. And could you briefly say what really did shakuhachi, this flute, give you? Wow. It would be much easier to tell you what it didn't give me. <laughs> <laughs> like shakuhachi is really my master. I've, I've had amazing teachers in my life, but mm -hmm. I have learned so much about myself and breathing and my body from the, from the shakuhachi. And it's this... Uh, the oneness, the inner silence, the chi, the energy, the, the breath. The shakuhachi is almost like a spirit, and you grab it to play it, and sometimes you're going to go like, you think you're going to play me now? You're kidding. Sit down, shut up, and breathe. I've heard of master players, a friend of mine, who for almost a year could not get a sound out of a flute. It's like, What's going on? You know, but it's like you need to really experience this integration, body, mm -hmm. spirit, mind, and get this chi out through the bamboo in a very natural way. So it's a profound, profound training. We have in Shakuhachi something called robuki. Ro is the first note when all the holes are closed. And, and ro, that's the name of the note. And buki is like a meditational practice. So all we do is just play one note, 10, 15 minutes, half hour, breathe, 
and play this one note. And I always tell my students, sometimes my teacher would stop me and say, no, <laughs> your whole life in one note. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <to say. laughs> and eventually I learned what, what, it, what it means to put your whole life in one note, you know, so I, nowadays there's so, so many amazing virtuosic young players, you know, but it's like, I want to hear that one note, okay. you know. <laughs> Well, this is actually the thing that I would like to see so much more in all the music education, that it's body-centered, it's mind-centered, it's, it's emotion-centered. It's kind of not the one and the two and the three and the, you know, because it's just coming out of your thinking. So that brings me also to a question. You said back to groove. There is a person who has not played an instrument, and it's a kind of unmusical person. How would you explain to this person proof? <laughs> <laughs> I would say walk. Uh -huh. you know, just walk. And, and I do that sometimes with students. They say, I have no rhythm. So they say, okay, walk. Walk from this wall to that wall. No, 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 no. Breathe and walk. No. I, I actually had that lesson very early in, in, in my life, and, and this teacher kept saying, no, 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 no. again. And we, it was a gym, right? So it's a long distance. No, no, no. Walk. Until I just felt this, oh, and this thing came, and he said, aha, okay, now you're walking. If you can walk, you mm. can dance. If you can mm. dance, you got a groove. Your breathing is groovy. Your heart is groovy. And so it all comes down to to getting rid of blocks rather than acquire anything, right? And it's very psychological. And it's also about discipline. You know, I, I do have a student, for instance, that the first time he came to me, I go like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I gonna do with this person? Five years he's been with me, two, two, mm -hmm. two. He's almost a professional musician now from not even being able to recognize, not impossible to play a groove. Just discipline, love, dedication, you know, just don't give up. Don't give up. It's worth it. <laughs> and also, you seemingly had very good teachers, and we are all, you know, blessed with good teachers. And, uh, yeah, teachers. and yeah. now, now it's uh, in your age, in my age also, <laughs> time to step and give what we have uh, perceived from so many people to oh. others, right? Yeah, one of my teachers was, uh, was Triti Shankaran. Have you heard of Triti yeah. Shankaran? And he was like, he was a, he would play and you would see Shiva dancing, you know, fire. It was an amazing thing. And so very, very inspiring, very inspiring to have the right teacher. Yeah. So be mm -hmm. be before we go further on, let's hear a little bit of your Shakuhachi playing in what is the, the name of East Gate. Can you explain a little bit of this? What what it means, East Gate? I, I planned this album as as a kind of a, a, a synthesis of all my influences, and so the East Gate, mostly Eastern music. The Western Gate, I brought the electric guitar and a little more psychedelic. The Southern Gate is more the African oh, Latin. Okay. Northern Gate is more the shamanic. Uh, all these influences are part of my life, and I thought. Be cool to do an album that has all of that, you know. Makes a lot of sense. So this yeah. is Eastgate. I hope.
Tesla, when he was asked, um, how can you approach the universe and the wisdom of the universe? He said, don't sink far further than energy, vibration, and pulsation. So my question is, your take on these very primordial expressions of rhythm and sound, because it's the same, like if it's slow, it's a pulse, it's faster, it's a frequency and a tone, and if it's even faster, it's other manifestations. Well, the only thing that matters for me about that, because again, from a from a Zen perspective, we don't really deal with concepts. Right? The, the, the concept is something that's up here. We deal with the experience of something, and to reach that experience is exactly what I was describing before, right? Technique, meditation, bring those two together, mm. breathe through, play the instrument in a state of meditation, and you will understand that concept completely non-conceptually. <laughs> Could like to even explain it, right? But I actually, I have a, a little bit of explanation for my students, and I explain to them that most of us live in horizontal time. And in horizontal time, you have past and future, and there is no present because it's constantly moving, right? Mm. The moment I say now, it's already gone. Mm. And so through the practice, you attain what I call vertical time. And vertical time goes through horizontal time, but there is nothing but now-ness. <laughs> nothing but now. And you get this very expansive feeling of the eternal quality of the now. And music, and particularly particularly rhythm, but in Chakuhati, I also find that such a gateway into that into that state. You know. Mm. Now you have a project. It's called Ocean of Sound. Yes. And well, you have a lot of instruments around you. Do do you have them with you in Prague now, or uh, do you travel with them around the globe, or? I do. <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. So, what is the um, the idea behind exactly that ocean of sound? Well, you know, I, you and I are pretty well the same generation. I'm 65 now, and I grew mm -hmm. up with the psychedelic era, and my heroes were Pink Floyd, and the, and later on the the progressive, the prog rock, and so. My love is improvisation and instrumental music. I, I'm not very friendly with words because I find that words just put me in this. This is what I mean, right? Whereas instrumental music is open and this vistas. And I'm also very fond, being from that generation, about music as a journey. So my pieces are, I mean, a short piece of minus 15 minutes, you know, it's 20 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes, so you can really dig in. Yeah. Yeah. And in Ocean of Sound, I have several sections that all interconnect with each other. And so it's it's about two and a half hours nonstop music. I discourage people from applause, you know, just like, 
Just, and people know that this is more, uh, a friend of mine and, and student of mine said, it's not a, a, it's not a performance, it's a prayer performance. They go like, <laughs> wow, I like that. <laughs> so is it is it in the workshop or is it a separate uh, evening where you just do that? Yeah, that's my concert. Uh, oh, for, wow. Yeah. Mm. Now, I think the listeners will be very curious how that sounds. And with your permission, I play a little bit of that. Thank you, Ryan. Ocean of sound, baby dancer. Now, when I saw you playing with Esther Stone, eh, you have a very special drum set that you also use in other occasions with uh, two mallets and a jambe drum. And how did this come about? Like, what would you encourage, for example, a drummer? How can a drummer find? Is creative setting. There's a creative setting you play here. Yes, you you hear the sounds inside yourself. I had a teacher that gave me the golden key, and he said, if you can't hear it, you can't play it. If you can't sing it, you won't play it. And so the sound has to be first and foremost inside of you, and then you get a very clear idea of what external tools you need to make that sound happen and i hear percussion and this is something that i really encourage my students to explore not as rhythm but as music mm -hmm. so i hear melodies and the djembe and tones and overtones you know and i encourage my students to really listen to it as music not get kum, ka, kum, kum, ka, and all tense muscles you know it's like no this is a dance this is music and so, since I was playing with the Stas, I thought it would be really interesting to also provide kind of like a bass guitar bass to mm -hmm. it. So I actually tune my drums very precisely because he plays in very precise keys, you know, A, E, this open-ended uh, guitar key. So I tune my congas so I can play melodies to it. And then I have all kinds of sticks and mallets and brushes so I can get every kind of uh, sound. And I have... Uh, um, what is it called? You know, it's not a kick. It's a, it's a, what is it called? Uh, it's a piece of wood with a microphone that you step on. Oh, yeah, clapper. Yeah, clapper. So that's my kick drum. Uh, ah. So I can travel with it. Mm. It has a huge sound when you put mm. it into a sound system. And then I put anklets, uh, African anklets. So I have my hi hat, my kick drum, my melodic uh, setup. 
and I love symbols. I just love symbols. So I have <laughs> two, three symbols, and I have what is called a wave drum that gives me yeah. some uh, electronic sounds, really yeah. cool, cool sounds. The know? ocean drum, right? With the uh, with the uh, things inside. Do you mean? No, that? no, no. Oh. Wave uh, a wave drum is an electronic a sample ah, a okay. drum that has about a hundred sounds. Some very natural, some very psychedelic. So oh. I can bring that touch of electronica also, you know. What are the two drums that you play with your, your sticks left? That right? One is the wave drum that has super uh, deep sounds, and the other is a floor tom that I uh, tone oh, okay. down very, very low, so more the shamanic feel to it, yeah. So yeah. basically the, the setup, I'm sitting on the cajon, have a djembe between my legs, two or three congas, uh, floor tom, wave drum, the, the kick drum in the in my anklet so full sound <laughs> that's a funny saying uh he's not just a drummer he's a musician <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because some people really just yeah. overhear it. Now, this is, I really love how you play with Estes, and maybe we have a little taste of that how you play with Estes. Petanza with Estas Tone. <laughs> really grooving along. <laughs> the jambe that you play, um, what is it, a rainbow jambe or what is it? It's what I can travel with. So it's one of those that's oh. like paperweight Remo drums, but it, it has a natural skin and I managed to put some tape inside to kind of mute it a bit and I got the sound that I needed. Sounds nice. Sounds yeah. really good. The Sounds rest of the good. drums are usually provided in each concert, so I never know what's good, what's going to come in my way. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's but great. But it's that's place in really high, you know, high class theater, so usually the equipment is really good. Um, where did you actually study the djembe? 
I lived in Canada for 25 years in Vancouver and many, many uh, master drummers there. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I had a good trick. Since I'm a good musician, I thought, why pay to, to learn? You know? So I put together a band with master drummers called the Drum Prayers. And mm -hmm. I learned while rehearsing. You know, I had a, an African drummer, a, a Latino drummer, a, a master from Philippines that he mm -hmm. played incredible salsa. And, uh, and I go, okay, so let's play a traditional rhythm from Cuba. And naturally, I would learn from them. So it was a fantastic mm -hmm. experience. And it was a really good band. We had good times. And then I met Trichy Shankaran, uh, which is my, my guru, uh, South Indian uh, Kandira uh, Mridangan player. And that's the golden key to the rhythm. Yeah, South mm. Indian. <laughs> it Mind is. blower, yes. And I, you, you might have heard in, in, uh, in the Back to the Groove how these patterns, also very much influenced by Steve Reich, you know. I yeah. Just, yeah. I listened to Steve Reich to no end. I saw him live in Amsterdam. I, I love that that dance of patterns uh, and that extended realization of a groove, you know? Mm -hmm. Amazing stuff. <laughs> so uh, let's finally go to something we both love, Brazil. <laughs> what, oh. <laughs> what did you uh, like explore and learn and exchange there? You know, being Uruguayan, we are tremendously influenced by the mm. Brazilian culture. So I grew up listening to Bossa Nova, Brazilian music, and being a musician. And as I started playing guitar when I was seven, eight years old. So, mm. and the guitar playing in Brazil. <laughs> so, as soon as I could stick my thumb out, I, I was hitchhiking to Brazil and, and reading and learning and playing and jamming. Mm. And so that, that was not only musically, but spiritually also, the candomblé music and Yemanja mm. and all these beautiful devotional songs to the actual elements really influenced me. And then after almost 20, well, 15 years in Canada, uh, I applied for a grant, and the Canadian government gave me a grant to travel to Uruguay and Brazil and study candomblé, candombe, and bring this wow. culture to Canada and teach it there. So I spent uh, two months traveling uh, all the way from Bahia to Montevideo and really experiencing because I was sponsored, so to speak, so I didn't have to look at the money issue at all. Mm. Wow. And the candomblé music is really part mm. of my heart. You know, this, this idea that the elements are alive in a form of consciousness and that through sound we can bring these elemental forces inside of us to serve the community. So beautiful. So I, I teach a lot of these chants and these rhythms. The idea that Yemanja is the ocean and she has a specific rhythm, specific mm. songs, the color, and we all get into this entrainment energy mm. and in prayer. So for me, that's poetry. <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh, have you ever been initiated into a common play? I've been told that I'm a son of Yemanja. Ah, yeah. I, I, I saw it, so yeah. I drummed, I drummed in the ceremonies because uh, the friend uh, that took me uh, to Brazil through that grant was a master, a capoeira master. So I was uh, not initiated, but I was mm. allowed in and actually mm -hmm. playing the drums for the ceremony. So it's a deep, yeah, deep the, experience. Yeah, the baki, right, yeah. Yeah, and I really didn't want to be initiated because I... I, I have so many, you know, I'm a, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Taoist, <laughs> I practice yoga, I play candomblé, you know, so I, I'm not a joiner in any way. Not that I have anything against that. We all have our own path, you know, but I'm, I'm more of a salad kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I can con congratulate you because it's very difficult to, you know, bring so many different almost opposing things together and for me it's very authentic how you do it thank you thank you really well you know i started when i was seven and i'm 65 so i've had lots of time <laughs> 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 yeah it's beautiful so my dear one i thank you oh, so thank much you, for brother. Your, thank you so brother. much for your time that's a pleasure and um where can people find you on the net? PepeDanza.com 
And uh, if you go to Bandcamp and look for Pepe Danza, uh, I have about 20 uh, extended journeys there and albums. Yeah, and of course, all over YouTube and with the stats, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not great on, on promoting myself. I'm kind of obscure. <laughs> I'm one of those typical musicians. That just let me play music, man. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my uh, orchestra pieces, a little part of it, uh, Space Beyond Space. <laughs> Can and, hear it? Uh, is, it in, uh, is it in YouTube or Apple? Yeah, YouTube? yeah. If you go to YouTube, put in my name in Space Beyond Space, you get it. But I really do hope, uh, Pepe, that you're very close here. We're um, neighbors, yes. If you ever come across the border here, please, uh, you know. Not you know. ever, but when. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for okay, your time. Hermano. Thank you. Hasta luego, hermanito. <laughs> yes. Ciao. And to your people, listeners, I hope you enjoyed our talks. The wonderful mm -hmm. paper dancer, very unique person. If you like the podcast, go to powerofrhythm.com forward slash podcast. Leave comments. Tell me whom else you want to interview. And for now, have a great day, have a great time, and keep on grooving. <laughs> <laughs>